Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks where we've got an exciting match for you today played on a twisted up version of Krakatoa. You might not even recognize this map just from this overview here. It looks so drastically different from what is usually the standard. It looks like we've basically flipped the entire map inside out. Should be some good fun here. So spawning on the western side and representing the red team is a Cortex commander, a commander that goes by the name of Grabars here. 31 true skill, a little silver tail po poking out as well and going into some of those bots. Definitely makes a whole lot of sense. Resbot's going to be very useful for eating up all the rocks and trees and whatnot lying around here. Going to boost those early game economies, not to mention the geothermal that's available here. Should be a leading tech position right here on the front lines for the red commander. Now, all the way across the map here, representing the blue team, also as a Cortex commander and also spawning in the front line position, goes by the name of the Seeker. Coming in at 30 true skill, silver chevron as well looking very nice. Krakatoa, usually this map features a high ground in the center and then a lower tier below that and then a further lower tier below that and then a final tier that is usually filled with water uh, or oftentimes it's played dry. Uh, so one, two, three, four different layers, if you will. This map has been inverted, so as you can see, there are now four layers, but in the opposite direction here. So we're looking at a upper layer around the outside of the map, and then a further layer down from that, and a layer down after that as well, and eventually down to the center spot where there are a, a lot of resources. Very, very juicy metal available for reclaim right here, as well as a bunch of geothermals that I'm sure any commander would be more than happy to extract the power from. It'll be interesting to see if anybody's going to be able to capture those. I don't know if that's traversable. I'm not sure if bots or vehicles can get down there. On the normal map, bots can walk up to this hill. Uh, vehicles cannot, however. So this should be a very bot-heavy map. I'm expecting to see a whole lot of bots, uh, especially just because of the fact that they're going to be so much easier to maneuver around up these little ramps and up the little hills and down into this middle area. Also, those spider bots, if we get into T2 here, should also be quite potent. Looks like Spiritus Flash going to be the air player right here for the blue team, the uh, sort of powder blue player. Going to be pumping out some of those transports. I think that's a great idea. Do we have an air player for the red team? Um, hmm. I don't see one. Yeah, it looks like no air player as far as I can tell from the red team right now. Could be a huge advantage if we apply a whole lot more pressure on the front line. Could be a huge disadvantage if we end up losing a, a whole bunch of economy to a bunch of bombers. That certainly could sting quite a lot. I think the imbalance right here is going to be over here on this left-hand side. Yeah, so Yarman Enza is going to be up against two commanders versus just his lonesome. Might be a little bit of a tricky situation to hold. Now, you can always fortify just one of these choke points right here. These are often very, very easy to fortify. Just build a whole bunch of LLTs and then eventually heavy laser towers and eventually those T2 towers. Pretty easy to just set up static defense right there, but also quite costly here. So it helps that there's so much more metal that's now going to be going back to the Seafoam commander here. Yeah, loads of metal on this map. It is originally a free-for-all map. Oh, looks like a Resbot has actually managed to eat up all the metal right here in the middle of the map. That's good to know. Originally, this is a free-for-all map, and free-for-all maps are calibrated in such a way that there's a tremendous amount of resources. Ooh, a little bit of a pause right there. A tremendous amount of resources out of the map for anybody and everybody to claim. So that being said, it makes a lot of sense here that these commanders are going to benefit from that as uh, their entire teams get the benefit of all that resource going back into their banks here. Rainbow Llama and Flint going to be the ones going up against Yarmanenza. Not sure why I'm pronouncing it. I guess maybe it's Yarmanenza, but uh, I'm, I'm suspicious of the fact that that J might be pronounced more like a Y. Anyway, Rainbow Llama and Flint marching forward in tandem right here. Love the synchrony of that. Flint has actually gone for vehicles. I think that makes sense given the spot right here. It does leave you a little prone to run by, though. I mean, you can imagine one or two grunts sneaking down the ramp right here and then up into the base of the orange commander. Hell, you could actually go up into the red base or the yellow base as well. Uh, of course, that goes ditto for the red team if they decide to go into units here, as we do have some bot labs out for the red commander, but also vehicles from M M uh, Emma Tarkus. There we go. Maybe uh, Tarkus from... Oh, what was that? The, uh, the one with Mars. Barsoom. Uh, John Carter, that's the movie. Any John Carter fans out there? I sure love that movie. I can't believe how slept on that movie is, actually. That movie is a work of art. Definitely underappreciated. Anyways, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's about the man who magically gets transported to uh, Mars and gets tied up in a whole bunch of hilarious antics. Um, yeah, what a, what a wild movie. Cool sci-fi, though. Anyways, before we got so horribly sidetracked, the air player is sending out a uh, construction drone to build a heavy laser tower. And this is going to take three and a half minutes in order to come up here, so I'd be surprised if it managed to. Yeah, it looks like these blitzers are going to be more than happy to shut that down. There they go, blasting away at that constructor. That was a pipe dream. 
definitely unlikely that that's going to come up here. But what we could do, certainly, is send a constructor around the side here and set up a little bit of a proxy base. We used to see that as a more of a cheese strategy than anything else on uh, Supreme Straits, trying to sneak out a constructor and put it in the back line so that you could build up a force and, yeah, eventually overwhelm the commanders over there. Much less viable now, as most people know, you can just send a scout or even just an early game bot back into that spot to shut that down very, very early on. Wouldn't mind seeing it here, though. There's certainly a lot of opportunities for it. Love that we have some units moving up to this high ground on the southern side as well, using those ramps to get up onto this southern shoreline. It's the uh, high ground shoreline, I suppose. Maybe this is the lost city of Atlantis. Maybe that's what this is. Uh, Resbot, you're on the wrong side, my friend. Uh, okay, that's pretty funny. <laughs> the Seeker's Resbot has marched his way all the way up the hillside, across and through the valleys, up and into the hills and uh, is now slurping up all these juicy juicy rocks that are available for the red uh team here yeah yellow commander eventually gonna pull some units to deal with this that is hilarious that resbot went on an absolute journey to get over there certainly reclaiming more than their metals worth uh, of resources here so i don't even really mind that it went down but it's just hilarious that it managed to even get that far heavy laser tower coming up oh no sorry a medium laser tower coming up right here still gonna take quite a while a minute and 12 seconds or so left on that beamer turret right there so certainly yeah gonna be a hot second a little run by of grunts over here as well getting their way uh towards the bases over here you can see they've been rallied in a nice little pattern going to be dispersing their laser powered firepower across the fronts of the green base here or oyuri oyuri we'll go with oyuri always love trying to learn how to pronounce the names in this game most of the time met with horrendous failure but uh that's part of the fun part of the fun for sure rainbow Lamba setting up a whole bunch of lots Yarmadenza trying to deploy a force to this northern section as well as this southern section. We do have a vehicle bay over here producing some vehicles and sending them around. Really love to see that actually. I think it's a great move. Using the most efficient troop for each area over here. So I think that definitely is uh, being well employed. Constructors going around building these metal extractors here too. Yarmadenza definitely looking on top of it right now. Krunkon, the Saiyan commander, has been overwhelmed over here. Bunch of blitzes pushing forward here. That makes three for three games where the Blitz has looked absolutely dominative. Yeah, there we go. That Cyan Commander trying to keep those metal extractors up and running as much as possible here. Uh, all said and done, I mean, we are trading bots for vehicles. So as long as the vehicles are cleaned up and the economy isn't too terribly damaged here, I think we lost basically just a couple of metal extractors, maybe two or three. It's not really that bad of a trade right here for Konkon because, of course, that, uh, that army can just be eaten up right here by this commander, sent back and turned into bots. And as long as that trade is relatively efficient, like a two to one, more or less, uh, bots to vehicles ratio, yeah, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. T2 being handed out all over the place in the back line here. Love to see that. Va va Vapirio? Vapiro? We'll go with Vapiro. Goes ahead and makes a whole bunch of those uh, T2 bots and is going to start sending them around to start eating up whatever, or uh, sorry, not eating up. I was looking at the res bot and thinking about eating up all these plants over here. I guess I'm a little hungry. The uh, T2 constructor is going to be going around building up those T2 economies. Once you step into those T2 economies, really easy to start pumping out a tremendous amount of forces here. But frankly speaking, most of these commanders have the economy to go into T2 all in their lonesome. Certainly Yarman does. Although that being said, the energy sector is looking a little thin right now. We definitely should have taken this geothermal. The altitudes are killing me here as the camera keeps dipping and rising as it falls up and down. I guess I apologize for that. One of those things that I'm sure eventually will change as this game continues to iterate. <laughs> we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see more UI changes and more, you know, development on that sort of thing. But for now, we'll just stick to observing the battles as they play out. Little collision over here, but my goodness, that's a lot of LLTs. We have twin guards and regular guards all built together here. It's going to mean that there's a huge amount of laser power over here. Definitely not comfortable to push into right there with those, uh, yeah, with, with, well, with any of this unit, really. Any, any T1 is going to struggle to push into that many LLTs, regardless. Tremendous push down south here. Oh, those Janices do fire against Konkan. Oh, no. Commander takes too much firepower and does explode into a thermonuclear ball of light and fire. Looks like the commander actually tapped out right there. A little bit of a drop. Not Konkan, but there was somebody somebody on the blue team decided to drop out of the game here. It must have been, yeah, probably this commander right here. The Seth taking over on the southern lane as well as in the back line now. Uh, tricky, because now you're in charge of teching as well as maintaining a front line, which is never a really comfortable position. Emma Tarkus moving forward. 
agitators, slowly but surely, sorry, aggravators, slowly but surely whittling away this T1 defense. Not really any reason to be losing these, though. They outrange the LLT, so there's not really any reason to be throwing them like this. The Seth is probably pretty happy about it, though. Uh, more of those aggravators go down, the slower these defenses will fall, so... Uh, slowly but surely recouping the cost here as more and more of those units have time to make it out to the battlefield. The further Emma pushes, though, the further I think... Yeah, this is going to look pretty bad right here for the Cyan Commander. Are we going up to T2? Ah, we have. Okay, so we're going up to T2. That's why there's no units on the field. Meanwhile, over here, we do have an overwhelming abundance of forces. Radar Jammer coming up as well to try and close some of these units from that... Automated shell shocker fire over here makes it very difficult to find appropriate targets. Lovely play right there by the flint. Love the medium laser turrets being sent up here. The uh, twin guard. Gonna be quite nice for providing a little bit longer vision, but also a little bit more stability on that front line. Rocketeers eventually cleaned up by the yellow commander over here. And that will be the end of the green presence, at least on this uh, mid layer here on the southern side. There is nice, nice little push going on over here. A whole bunch of Rocketeers. We don't have any Resbots, which is a bit of a bummer. Three or four or five Resbots. Ooh, all of those go down. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty costly. Four or five Resbots right here could have kept a whole lot of these alive, resurrected them, and continued the push, but it's not really going to matter now as that commander has evaporated, taking mo many of those units with it. Rocket, rocket Spiders are coming out here. The uh, all, all to be feared recluse. I'm surprised we haven't seen more aggression through these little choke points over here. We have units patrolling back and forth. At this point, I feel like we might as well have gone for the geothermals down there. If your uh, regular T1 units aren't being obliterated down there, you might as well go for some geothermals. Very low cost to uh, payback ratio, right? I mean, you just send two or three constructors down that way and build four, ge four geothermals is going to produce three, six, nine, twelve hundred energy per second. I mean, that is more than enough to get started on a T2 economy and very nice for if you're already into a T2 economy. That's two advanced energy converters worth of energy per second converted to metal. 20 or so metal per second. Definitely quite nice. T2 is hitting the battlefield here for Yarman. Or are they being handed over? Hold on. Where are those fiends coming from? <laughs> oh, they are. Okay, so the Seeker was producing fiends and handing them over to Yarman. Okay, love that. Love a good good teamwork in the morning. Very nice. Spiritus Flash has fortified this area. I'd love to see a little more aggression, though. Yeah, I think pushing forward with the commander, not a bad idea. More and more risky as we get into this T2 battlefield. Not a bad idea, though. Oh, okay, there we go. We're building a Cerberus over here, as well as a little radar and radar jammer array. Yeah, we've got some uh, T2 walls queued up, as well as, uh, yeah, those sensory attachments. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it looks like the Seeker is ready to get aggressive right through the middle of the map right here. Very nice to see. Grabars needs to get some forces on the field right here. If we don't field an army to defend all this, this is definitely going to be quite expensive. The uh, red base looking a little bit prone to collapse right now. There's just four LLTs guarding all this. Certainly not enough to hold back that entire army that the Seeker already has, let alone the reinforcements that will arrive. This may be the fourth or fifth heavy laser tower that's been attempted here, but I think it's the first one I've seen successfully be deployed. For what it's worth, doing a great job of blasting away at a whole bunch of these aggravators. Very, very nice area control unit, especially with this uh, build power keeping it alive right here. Gonna start blasting away at a whole bunch of these rocket bots. Really nicely done. Yeah, that heavy laser tower definitely getting its value out here. Five confirmed kills, and I have a feeling it's going to get a whole lot more. Oftentimes, those heavier T1 static defenses, they can be a little bit contentious. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. It's all about how efficiently you can use them, and that mostly comes down to where they're positioned, and I think that's pretty much as good a position as you're going to get. Rocket Spiders trying to connect with as many of these tanks as possible. For what it's worth, the medium tank is a pretty solid target for those Rocket Spiders. It's just slow enough that those Rocket Spiders can connect most of the time, as long as their angle is pretty good and everything lines up well. This is not the ideal angle, though. You definitely want to be firing straight on or backwards. You don't want to be running parallel with your Rocket Spiders. Rocket Spiders weird in that sense. You have to be really on top of the direction of the fight rather than, uh, you know, most units are sort of omnidirectional. The Rocket Spiders definitely benefit from running and moving parallel uh, or anti-parallel with other units a whole lot more than most other units do. Spybot's headed up the way here. I see those moving slowly but surely up the hill. Well, that one at the very least. Moving up towards the red base, trying to scout out what defenses are and aren't available. I'm sure once that spy bot gets a look at those four meager LLT, that T2 army will pounce, and that's going to be a huge, huge push right there. We also have the geothermal battery down here, the Cerberus.
going to be quite good for holding this middle ground, actually. Cerber has put out a walloping amount of firepower, so it can be very difficult to deal with those effectively. I'm really surprised we don't see more leverage being played or being used in the background over here. I almost imagine, oh, okay, looks like Vipiro is sort of going for what I imagined here. Just going for a big eco center and then building up a crazy, crazy T2 economy and going for massive T T3 production. Or even T2 production wouldn't be the end of the world. Spybot does discover the LLTs up here. Realizing it's just a couple of LLTs, not the end of the world. Whole army marches forward. And that is a compelling army. We have loads and loads of fiends moving with loads and loads of grunts. Definitely a tricky one to deal with. The uh, grunts provide a nice stable amount of firepower while the fiends are just so devastating. So much DPS. Grabars moves the commander over here. I think you're pretty much going to have to self-destruct it. I don't know if any D-gun is going to be good enough to handle all of this. I'm going to go for the D-guns regardless. Karganeth is out. Ooh, can the Karganeth clean all this up? The Karganeth is quite powerful. It's the uh, counterpart to the Razorback for the Cortex faction. I usually get a lot of pushback when I say that, but it is true. It is the Assault Bot for the Cortex faction. Works and functions slightly differently here, but uh, still, you can see just how tremendous that bot is. As all of those units, that entire push has been mopped up quite nicely here. Now, the commander did have to pay for it with his life as well. But all aside from that, I think these Karganeth are going to be more than enough to deal with whatever forces are now being spammed out here. These T1 Grunts not going to be able to hold up against the multi multi launch rapid rocket fire coming out of those Karganeth. Boy, isn't that a sentence. Blitz is sent over too, but yeah, now the second Karganeth has hit the field and this is already completely shut down. No way the T1 is going to do it anymore here for the Blue Commander. Going to have to switch into T3. There's just no other option. Already has an Aphis up and running, so at the very least the economy is looking fairly good, especially with this advanced Geo as well, cranking out a whole lot of energy. But it could definitely turn quite quickly. Fiends have jumped on top of a bunch of T1 units. Yeah, those medium tanks, especially the Shell Shockers and Wolverines, all that sort of stuff, gonna suffer quite immensely. Fiends decide to self-destruct over here. Might have been a little preemptive on that, but I like to see that we're at least thinking about it. Self-destruct, definitely one of the more powerful things that the Fiend has in its arsenal. Allows for a whole lot more micro ability than other units tend to have. There's that geothermal firing away here. If we could just get all of these upgraded to geothermals, plasma geothermals, the Cerberus, I would love to see it. I mean, that would be four Cerberus firing away. Three volleys each. Quite good. Quite good indeed. The Seeker moving forward for the D-Gun here. Trying to, at the very least. Uh, maybe thinking about killing these. Ah, I see the move. Yeah, so I'm trying not to actually D-Gun these. Instead, kill them with the forces at hand. Oh, that Cerberus. So much friendly fire. Yeah, killing them with the forces in hand and then using the res bots. Nicely done by the blue commander. Nice little bit of uh, nice little bit of map map reading, right? Good uh, good realizing what units are available and then using whatever is available to your disposal. Spider bots have continued their push over here, popping a whole bunch of well energy converters for now. Build power under threat as well. Oh yeah, anti air not the priority target here. The build power, the build power spider. Not gonna be the, not gonna be the case. Doesn't get the geothermal either. I heard another explosion. Oh, we have a little push down here. Okay, not gonna be the end of the world. Yeah, some blitzes run through, but there's heavy laser towers. Those will be more than enough to clean all those up. Sharpshooters as well, gonna be phenomenal. Whole bunch of units handed over to the yellow commander. A bunch of medium tanks handed over to the yellow commander. It's quite nice. I mean, the yellow commander no no longer has any uh, yeah any units to their own name. These bombers are coming in. Oh, if they hit those wind turbines, they would all chain react as well. What are these bombers going after? Oh no, they're not cute on anything. Hello? Hello? Where are we bombing? So many bombers with such lofty ambitions. Okay, we're going after the uh, advanced metal extractor. Yikes. Wind turbines, energy converters, build power, build power, advanced fusion reactors, geothermals, just about any of it would be a more ideal target here. Those bombers going after just about probably the worst target that I think they probably could find. Maybe not the end of the world right here for Spiritus Flash, but certainly got to get on top of it. If you're going to be playing a dedicated air roll, you need to get some value out. Otherwise, you're effectively denying your team a player. We do have an air transition here as well from the blue commander who's gone into a couple of those heavy bombers. Those Karganeth have been resurrected and sent forward. If we can continue to trade out the Karganeth for other Karganeth, they'll bring them down and then the rest can just be resurrected here. It's one way to turn a T3 army against your opponent here. Just essentially use their own production against them. Uh, Anti-air turrets are built, but they're not quite finished. Oh, and the advanced Geo pops takes down the advanced fusions. Huge bombing run right there. My goodness, those hailstorms were absolutely critical. Just took out basically the entire 
facility for the red player here. Left with only a single Karganath, a commander, and whatever else remains from the rubble. Man, those hailstorms are trouble. Wow, we even take out the build power. Well, some of the build power anyways over here with the uh, death explosion right there. What a brutal, brutal bombing run. Definitely opening up the path right there for the blue commander to continue the push, continue the aggression. The Karganath indeed going to march on over in this direction. Love to see it. There is anti-air coming out of that Karganath. It has a little backpack anti-air missile launcher. It's a uh, popular one um, among some of those T3 units. I know the demon has one as well. Very, very nice. Razorback, not so, uh, you know, not, not so inclined to that sort of a thing. It uh, mostly just shoots its lasers up into the sky. Nice, we get the build power too. Yeah, these bombers, just a couple of them here and there, but they've done so much work. Karganath now show themselves over on this hillside. More than happy to blast away at some Amexes, but I don't think that's really their ideal target here. Fusion reactor is certainly a priority. The uh, Geo over here also going to be quite nice if we can bring that down. There they go, firing away now. They can't get in each other's way, so you do have to be careful about that. Fusion reactor pops going to mean the geothermal is quite weak and it goes down as well. Energy converters, wind turbines, the whole nine yards about to pop right here as the orange base collapses from a beautiful push. Nice little bit of flankage right through the middle of the map. Love to see that the blue commander is taking advantage of this massively imp impactful presence that he has right in the center of this map where basically all branches are available for assault right here. We can redirect forces towards the yellow base next. Slowly start taking down Emma. Commander goes down over here. Those medium tanks being used to good effect here. Love to see it. At least we're trading them out efficiently as much as possible anyways. That being said, I don't think they're going to be long for this world as the last of them start to get slowly but surely blasted away over here. These sharpshooters have been such a thorn in the side of the brown commander as well as the yellow. And now those Karganath are going to continue their march, neither of which actually spectacularly damaged here, leaving the orange player with basically no production. It's quite crippling. All we need at this point are some solid bombing runs and we can manage to take out uh, the remainder of the red team here. One such commander with anything to say about it would be the hot pink commander. There is an anti-nuke cup, which is always nice to see. Vapiro going for a air constructor in the back lines there. I wonder if we're going to actually go into air or if we're maybe just going to go into... Uh, yeah, just, just go into a whole bunch of T2 constructors to build up that base. Either one could work here. Are we reclaiming and resurrecting at the same time? We sure are. Would you look at that? So the funny thing about reclaiming is that it pulls down the progress on, resur or on uh, resurrection. Or rather, it pulls metal out of the structure. And then when you reclaim something, it uh, or when you resurrect something, you put the metal back in. So what we're seeing right now, there we go is a commander continually cycling his metal through this building. A beautiful display, to be honest. Don't know if I've ever seen something so beautiful. Karganath over here, one of them at the very least goes down. The other one will wisen up here and change direction. Maybe gonna look at, yeah, pushing over in this way. Trying to get a little bit of damage done. Knows that it has the opportunity to push through and do a whole bunch of damage. Not necessarily finding the appropriate angle on the first shot though. Hounds and Rocketeers and Sharpshooters, a whole big mess of units, but very, very brutally difficult to push into here. I think pretty much the ideal counter right now would be a spy bot. If you can get two or three spy bots to connect with this entire force, since they're all grouped up, relatively speaking, they're in a line, but only two or three spy bots would cover this entire thing or most of this entire thing. Just build a whole bunch of T1 forces, a couple of spy bots, send them forward. I think eventually that would be the only way to actually get an efficient trade right here. Wondering why Seth is pulling back right now, though. Doesn't really feel necessary. I think we could probably push for the win right here. Maybe misunderstanding exactly how dire the situation is from the uh, brown commander here. Is just barely getting a T2 lab up and online right now, but doesn't quite have the metal production to get it up quick enough. Spy tank coming up this way. Going to provide vision for these Mauser to fire away from the low ground. More or less. There we go. Mauser is certainly capable. Very capable unit. Oh, it looks like... Uh, yeah, Karganeth was paralyzed over here. Oh, look at that. It made a heart. It made a heart. <laughs> Never mind my terrible artistic rendition of the heart, but uh, yeah. Beautiful. Hold on. I want to I screenshot of that. There we go. <laughs> Love to see it. The Karganeth, the unit of love. Mauser get jumped on over here. That's a bit of a bit of a bummer. 
They had reinforcements over over on this uh, northern side over here, just, just north of the lowlands. Fortunately, those ones were tied up dealing with other T2 units that are coming out of the lab right now from Concon, so not able to actually do all too much there. With the production wiped out, it didn't really matter how efficient the trade was over here, as now the Seafoam commander can march a whole bunch of these units forward, and just like that, Yarman has pushed forward into the hearts of the Orange base, where no more does any production lie. No reinforcements to ever save the day there, so it just means that the Orange commander is completely wiped out of this game at this point. Single constructor does remain here, but not being used to rebuild in the back right here. We are actually going into planes, by the way. Forgot to double check on that, but we are... Going into a whole bunch of T2 air right now for the uh, Hot Pink Commander. The Fat Boy goes down. Man, when your Fat Boy starts melting immediately, you know you're under some thick firepower. Those those uh, T2 Armada heavy artillery bots are quite tanky. Build power being targeted down here, more or less. Hound's in a brutal scuffle right now. Sharpshooters trying to contribute that long-range firepower. Sharpshooters get value over time, right? So you have to be really careful about making sure... Well, that was a nice bombing run. You have to, be, you have to make sure that you uh, contribute those those sharpshooters in a spot where they're going to be able to fire multiple times in a row, not just fire once and forget. Mammoth, great for dealing with those super heavy targets, those T3 units, all that sort of stuff. They can stand up to the firepower. They can dish out some smack of their own. Not going to be ideal, though, for dealing with all of these grunts that are running by. And just like that, the entire economy for the soft pink commander has been an evaporated by the laser fire from those grunts. Just some good old T1 grunts pushing forward right now from the blue commander. Wouldn't mind a T3 transition. At this point, we've got triple APHIS with an advanced geo as well. Plus all these uh, Cerberus, which do provide a little bit of energy, it's worth noting. 1,800 energy from the four of those. Not bad whatsoever. Resbot's coming up the hill to eat all this up as well. Quite nice. Yeah, those, uh, those Resbot's eating up the bases of the enemy is oftentimes the most powerful thing that they can do. Whole T2 army moving down south here. There is a little T2 brigade moving forward here. We have some lightning tanks, we have some Mauser, we have a radar and a radar jammer. We even have an anti-air truck. This is a full-blown composition here. I love to see it. That uh, anti-air truck not really firing as fast as it probably would hope to. Ambassador in a little bit of trouble. Those uh, rocket trucks, very slow moving. Definitely a strategic asset. Not necessarily a mobile one, though. Resbots tear down this lab and lose their lives for it, but I think they definitely got their metals worth of uh, absorption over here. Yeah, eating up that geothermal, eating up that res that uh, T2 lab. Definitely putting a whole lot of metal in the pocket right now for the blue commander. You can see sitting at 12,000, actually having a hard time spending it all. Starts up another APHIS. Why not go for a little more economy here? At the very least, the energy might overflow to the other uh, team. Or not the other team, the other teammates, rather. Best case scenario, though, you just put it into your own production. Start pumping out units, and you continue to express a beautiful advantage right here. All that metal has gone back, and I mean, we can see it in the charts here. 750-ish metal for the blue team versus 540-ish for the red team. Not a lost game by most measures. Certainly recoverable right here, but the longer this goes on, the uh, longer this is going to... The longer the difference between these two is going to spread out, the more vast that difference will be. There we go. Mammoth does go down. Once the mammoths fall, things start to look dire. One last rocket, just to seal the deal. <laughs> uh, advanced metal extractors go down. We also have some... Oh, these are actually pop-up turrets. That's nice. Yeah, Dragon's Claw's up there. Not that it's very important, but they are up there to seal off that area. I'm surprised we haven't seen more backstabbing, more run-bys from those northern passes. Sort of a blessing and a curse, because as soon as you start going for run-bys, you almost remind the enemy team that they can go for run-bys as well, so you almost prompt them to counterattack you through that lane. It sort of shifts the uh, lane of fighting away from the, well, maybe the lane that you intend to be fighting on, and that can be a bit of a problem, too. I would love to see some pros play on this match, and are playing this map, rather. Try this match out. I'm sure we'd see backstabbing, backstabbing non-stop. A nice recovery right here by the Red Commander, who's got themselves into a nice little T1 Spamulatory. We've also got a uh, T2 Air Lab coming up here, which has been interesting. I wonder if we're going to go for anything else. We do have the Geothermal available here as well. I'd love to see that turned into a Prude, maybe. A little bit safer of an option. Yeah, Grabar is not out of it yet. Still clinging on to the threads of society, hoping to attain something. 
Ooh, the bombers coming in. Huge, huge bombing arm. My goodness, all of those fat boys evaporate under the hellfire from those blizzards. Beautifully, beautifully done. Now, they're not doing anything over here, and these fighters are going to take them down. Uh, yeah. Good and bad. I like the bombing run there, but I think we probably should have just pulled them back without a fighter escort. No reason to sacrifice your bombers there other than uh, unless you were trying to go for some sort of move and there just wasn't anything out here to bomb. Maybe thinking there was more units over here than there really was. Fatboy's going to struggle against the spam of rovers headed out now, so love to see that by the yellow commander. Harganeth trying to break through this line. It's a lot of T2 and T1 mixed together here. The sharpshooter is really the core of the... Uh, the main, the main damage dealer here in this entire unit, so love to see that we're including those, keeping them in the back line, keeping them nice and safe. Sheldon also contributing quite a lot, but much better against this T1 stuff than uh, any of that T2 or T3. There go a whole bunch of those blitzes. The blitzes could certainly jump on these Sheldon at this point. At any moment, these blitzes will move. <laughs> Blitz is long and uh, forgotten here. Yeah. Oh, not great. Unfortunately, one of the problems with sending reinforcements to your allies uh, is if you don't actually hand them over, it's very easy to forget exactly where those reinforcements are and what they're actually doing, as is the case right here. It's one of the reasons why I always recommend that if you're going to send reinforcements to your teammate, make sure you actually share them to your teammate. Uh, use the little twin arrow signs over here on the right-hand side just to make sure that should those units be needed, they will be used appropriately. No shame in handing over units. In fact, I'm sure your teammates will be much obliged. Loads of defenses over here. I mean, the Cerberus contributing so much firepower. We also have a couple of pop-up turrets. We have some twin guards. Everything and some more pumped onto the toolbook or put up, pulled out of the toolbook here to, uh, yeah, be used against the commander over here. Loads of hailstorms coming out now. Heavy strategic bombers. Loads of scout planes included in this as well. Love to see that. Yeah, we're just going to go kill the red player again. Oh, actually, splitting the forces here. Love to see that as well. Those heavy bombers. Oh, is there enough? Oh, no. Just barely not enough. 4% remaining right there. Still going to manage to kill the advanced fusion reactor over here, though, for on, well, from old man APM here. Massive explosion in the maroon base right there. Just like that, the red economy plummets. You can see now the blue team pulling in about 1.1 thousand metal versus the red team pulling in about 550. Definitely devastating here. T3 units push forward. Oh, this is a nice catch. Okay, yeah, we managed to actually jump on top of all this. Shiva and Karganath, a dream uh, team here. Going to be pretty good for blasting away the vast majority of this stuff. There we go. All the T1 evaporating instantaneously under the multi-launch rapid-fire rocket launch systems of those Karganath as well as the heavy impulse war plasma throwers from those Shivas. Absolutely love the way that that engagement went right there for the hot pink commander. Red commander still using this hero Karganath from the early game, the early late game. It was uh, one of two Karganath, the, or one of three Karganath the red commander ever produced here. And now it's standing its ground, holding firm against the darkness, trying desperately to stop these hounds from marching towards the base over here. But I think the amount of those that leak through has sort of revealed that the Red Commander actually does not have a tremendous standing force. A lot of static defense, a lot of LLTs, a lot of other stuff like that, but nothing actually to stop an army from marching too much further forward here. Nice save right here by the Hot Pink Commander. Yeah, since those Shiva and Karganath the Cross actually cut off the reinforcements. Ugh, the friendly fire damage is immense, though. Gotta be so careful. Yeah, those Shiva are more than happy to blast away at their own toes or their allies' toes. Either one. Uh, more than well enough. Marauders over here. Shooting down some of those airplanes as well. The air wave has actually been thinned out quite dramatically here. Yeah, no more of those maroon fighters are up in the sky. Well, not a whole lot of them at the very least. Papiro has got those T2 production centers as well, but they're, yeah, currently distracted by some of that T2 economy, so gonna be tricky to deal with. Papiro in a killer position, though. Could certainly degun down these Marauder if it's a killer set of deguns. We also have some res spiders coming up across. They're not res spiders. Reclaim spiders here. The Webbers coming across. They also produce energy, which is quite funny. Bombers being used to obliterate whatever they can over here. Papiro not cloaked. Oh no. Oh no, Commander uncloaked. Uncloaked commanders don't get to degun anything, and just like that, not a single Marauder will go down right there from the Hot Pink Commander. 
meaning that this entire base is completely exposed. Bombing run connects with the red base over here as well. Comes in from a bit of an awkward angle that maybe the red commander wasn't expecting. Advanced Geo pops, advanced fusions follow shortly thereafter. The Marauder is more than happy to blast away at this hot pink base, as well as the tan one now. I have a feeling it won't be long before these Aphises pop in the back line here for the Pink Commander, boom, goes the dynamite. There go all of the hard work that the Puro has put in. Still another production center over here, but rapidly losing ground all over the place. Now the Marauder sneaking through here. The Shiva being pumped out in mass to try and deal with all of it, but it's slowly becoming one man against the world here as the last remaining bastion of any sort of substantial technology. Well, I suppose Emma has a nice little fortification of T2 over here, but still the uh, real economy, the, the real economic driver right now is the Hot Pink Commander left with only their main production center. Tan Commander does go down. T3 Lab brutally exposed now. And not going to be finished off quite yet, it looks like, but those, where are those Reclaim Spiders? Oh, I think they died to the Aphis there. That's a bit of a bummer. If those Reclaim Spiders had gotten their grubby little spider mitts on all of this stuff, it would have been beautiful. Eating up all that metal and turning it into T3 would be a huge advantage. These bombers looking for a connection over here. Only three bases remain right now for the red team. Those bombers, their uh, choice of targets is slowly narrowing. Old man APN, also uncloaked here. Doesn't have the energy to cloak even. Yeah, once that economy goes, your choices become quite limited. What a nightmare, calls Emma Tarkas, who is now faced with the devastating presence of units on all sides. <laughs> Geothermal's firing away from the low ground here. Fat Boy's firing away from the high. We have units moving in on all sides here. The Reclaim Spiders blast, or sorry, the uh, Recluses rather, blasting away wherever they can. Big bombing run connects and down go the Aphises right there for Vapiro as well. And just like that, the red team decides to throw in the towel as the blue manages to claim victory over this bizarre look at Krakatoa. What an awesome, awesome match. I will definitely have to give this map a try. This looks like a whole lot of fun. I think there's definitely some unexplored territory in this matchup right here, so I'll be thrilled to take a look at it. If you enjoy that sort of stuff, you can always tune in for the streams, by the way, on Tuesdays and Saturdays, where we're likely to try out things like this. Other than that, though, I sure hope you'll consider hitting that like button and hitting the subscribe button. Helps get beyond all reason out there, and isn't that what we're all here for? Other than that, though, aside from all those things that I'm illegally obligated to do as a YouTube creator, I sure just hope that you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the very next game of Beyond All Reason. Peace out, everybody.